So today I'm going to show you how I fitted an ESS to the front of my recumbent trike. The motor in question comes as a kit, it's the Tongsheng TSDZ2. All the details of where I acquired the kit are down below. And uh, just to note, even though it's an AliExpress company that I bought it from, their deliveries are from the Netherlands. So you don't have to wait too long and you get the European warranty for anybody that's in the EU and interested. I'm just going to turn around and go back the other way because there's a big busy road there. Too noisy to record. So as well as showing you how to fit the motor, I'll also just briefly show you how I've decided to fit the controller, the speed sensor and the battery. I won't go into a lot of detail on that because where to fit those bits and what type of battery you'll buy is very much a personal choice. As some of you already know, I went for the bottle shaped battery and uh, I've managed to fit mine around that. So, anyway, that's enough for now. Here's the fit. So, first things first, let's have a look, see what we get in this kit. This is a kit that I bought from AliExpress, but uh, following the advice of a guy who fits these down in the south of England, I actually bought them from a company, even though they're on AliExpress, the supplies come from the Netherlands. So, I still got the kit within about, I think it was four to five days, which is pretty good. So the other thing to say is, of course, your kit would not come looking like this. I've already fitted this to the trike once, so this perhaps looks a little bit dirty and it's obviously not in the box that it came in. But this is pretty much what comes in that kit. So from the top left then, we have the motor itself. It comes with a 44 tooth. It's either 42 or 44. I'll put it on the screen so I can tell you which one it is. But as you can see with my hand there, it's a fairly small little motor. It weighs quite a bit, I think. Uh, it's probably a good four or five kilos there. Again, I'll weigh it, put it on the screen for you. Next up, we've got the uh, crank arms there. They're 170 mil. Absolutely nothing out of the ordinary about them. They come with the uh, square taper fitting. Coming around, we've got the controller usual buttons on there which you can't see unless it focuses there we go so you got your power levels up and down information and this is on and off but also has a light for nighttime display after that you get your speed sensor this is one of those where the little magnet on the spokes goes past as the wheels going round so we have to connect this at the back somewhere near the rear wheel or one of the front wheels if you want to. Then we have an additional power control. This plugs into the back of that unit there. I don't actually use this one. I'll keep it as a spare, but uh, I find it unnecessary. That controller, that controller there is always well within reach and just as easy to use. I don't really see the point in having a second one. So I haven't been using that. And the only other additional part that you get in the kit is this spanner, which fits on that nut. So, you mustn't lose this. Now, in addition to that, in order to fit this kit onto a trike, you'll need one of these. This is a 52mm P-clip. 52mm because that's the diameter of my boom. You need to check your boom diameter before you buy one of these if you're putting it on a trike. Otherwise the motor comes with an additional clamp for a normal upright pedal cycle that fits in that little hole over there. So more about that when we come to fit it. In addition to that, also if you're fitting it on a trike, you need to buy an extension cable for the speed sensor 
because that speed sensor cable will literally only come from the motor to the rear wheel on an upright bike. There is no way that will even reach to the front wheels of a trike. As you can see, it's only what, eight inches, 10 inches long. It's just not gonna do it. So we have to buy an additional extension cable for that. It comes from the same company. And a quick look at the tools that we're gonna be using to fit the motor. You've already seen this one. That comes as part of the kit. So no need to worry about that. Small socket wrench to do one bolt up. A multi-tool. You should all have a multi-tool if you're out on a cycle anyhow. As always, a few cable ties to keep things tidy. And then on the end here, I've got a, um, a tool there for splitting the chain. That removes the quick link in the chain. I'm uh, taking off a 25 tooth gear at the front, chain ring at the front. And uh, so I'll need to put in, I think it's about five or six links. No, probably not as much as that. Three or four links, I think. But we'll see when we get there. So there's the chain link tool and obviously a pedal spanner. That's it. Right, so in my case, I've removed the FNEO drive from the trike. So we're down to the bare bottom bracket there. But uh, whatever you've got on your trike at the front end needs to come off so that you're just down to this little hole. So hopefully with two cameras pointing at the same thing, you'll be able to see what's going on here. So we're going to bring the motor through nicely prepared and cleaned bottom bracket. And it just sits there like that for now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is pop this little bracket on there. Now behind that bracket are two of these washers or spacers to go behind there, so that's one. The other little spacer goes behind there. Just do that up loosely for now. There we go. Now, the next thing we need is our P-clip. And the P-clip is going to go around the boom. Just let me get this in place and then I shall move the camera to show you where it's going. Okay, so basically the P-clip has to go around the boom and then gets bolted into that hole. Now I can't do that with the camera pointing straight at it like that so you're gonna have to bear with me whilst I just put that bolt in and then I'll come back and show you once it's finished. Okay, so the bolt is now firmly in place and the idea is that's to stop the torque of the motor turning the whole body around this point here. That will now hold that in place nice and steady. So now we can finish tightening up these two little nuts on the front here. That's that done. Next, we have this big nut on the front. Now I like to give this one a tap with a big rubber mallet just to make sure that it's done up plenty tight. Just like that. So believe it or not, that's it for the motor installation. All we've got to do now is put the crank arms on either side and the pedals, and then we get on with sorting out these wires at the bottom and what they go to.
So, with the crank arms in place, you just need to put on your pedals of choice. So mine are these Shimano clipless. We shall be putting them in there, making sure I get the right one. Yes, got the right one first time. But can you remember which way the thread goes? Probably not. So having completed that bit of the install, we then have these three wires that come out of the back of the motor. One of them is yellow, the other one is just black, and the other one is a lot longer. So what we've got here, the yellow one is the one for the speed sensor, the black one is the one for the controller, and the other one is the power lead that goes straight to the battery. So previously you would have seen I had the controller up on the stand assists. Uh, I've decided against that now because basically it was just getting in the way of my camera when I was out and about trying to do some camera work. It's just another unnecessary obstacle. So now it's just going down there, sitting on top of the frame. Just forward of that is a bottle cage. If you've been on my channel before you'll have seen that. And the reason I have that is because that's where my bottle shaped battery now fits and that's where the power lead goes into straight in the bottom of the bottle battery there so that's now a nice neat compact little unit right at the front of the trike where I can get to it straight away if I need to whilst I'm going along so that's two of the leads we've got the lead that goes into the controller and the lead that goes into the battery and they're basically just channeled along the bottom of the boom under the frame using cable ties to hold them in place and the third cable goes to the speed sensor at the back so let's have a look at that so looking down inside my frame now see these two little bobbly bits these two little mounts on the inside of the frame if I could put the speed sensor onto those it gives me something to grip cable ties onto the speed sensor itself has two holes for cable ties to go through. I will then put the speed sensor on there and that holds it out close enough to the spokes of the wheel for it to pick up the magnet as it's going round. So that's it guys, I think you'll agree it's a remarkably easy fit, so easy that I think over the coming year you're going to see me interchanging the e-assist with my FNEO drive, depending on whether my rides are going to be generally flat or hilly. But we'll see, we'll see as the year goes by, but uh, as I say that's it for now, I hope you enjoyed that one got any questions or concerns let me know in the comments below and uh, I'll be back with another one again soon. Cheers then guys, ta-da!